raped her, murdered her, and threw her in a ditch. That was their answer to a world that had denied. I was taking roll this one morning, and uh, the door opens, and standing there are three boys that I had never seen before. And one of them calls out to me and, and says, um, hey, uh, are, are you the teacher? And uh, I say, yes, I am. And he says, uh, Mister, I'm going to kill you. has a gun inside, so any kid can pick one up as easily as opening a book. Not easier, actually, and sooner. Well, violence seems much more exciting than education. back some of the best times in my life is when me and my brothers would go and pick up my father. Take him out and just show him a good time while we could. Anyway, it happened that night. Happened one night he was at a store. Pull up to a store to get a little drink. And along comes this gang. These chumps come up. One of them pulls out a shotgun and puts it to my father's head, right here, and pulls the trigger point blank. My first duty is protection of the community. But what about the ones that aren't supposed to be backing me up? The courts, the schools, the probation department, the youth camps. They don't seem to be rehabilitating anyone. So the kids remain criminals. And they get better at it each year. Criminals, that's what they are, criminals. 12, 13-year-old lawbreakers. But when they're brought before me in my court and I look down at their faces, faces just like my grandson, I think, my God, what a shame. What a, a damn shame, what they're doing. That they don't realize that they themselves are as much the victims of their violence as we are. At the probation department, a girl once said to me that she lamented turning 18 because she hadn't killed anyone and couldn't now without risking punishment as an adult. <laughs> the whites simply don't have gangs. It's, it's always called clubs or, or organizations, but, but it's all the same. Gangs. Yeah. I 
I'm a principal and my assignment was the worst grammar school in the district. A school that was always being vandalized. I decided to meet the problem with an action program. And I knew it had to begin with the principal. Because the principal sets the tone of the school. Getting arrested. It's always funny because, because the courts somehow think that they're doing something bad to you by getting you arrested. It was no, no big thing for us. I don't want any gang. It's instant power, it's, it's instant status, it's instant success, it's, it's instant friends. And instant enemies too. Still. What I do want is out. Get some bread in. And get away from the gang. Especially those, those little dudes, man. Little stone cold dudes. The killing. I've been to so many funerals. I'm tired. Fine. The mail last week. An invitation to a conference on crime in the schools. I told them they should have a couple of gang members there and they went for it. But now they saying they want me to go to a meeting and talk or whatever it is. Ain't no really no real reason, except they want to see a, a, a real life gang member. Okay, I'll be there. And I'll even dress up for the occasion. These people are probably going to expect me to come in and bow and say, Ah, oh, ah, oh, sir, very pleased to meet you. The only thing is, is they are not going to get a polite, smiling Buddha head. In 24 hours, I'll be stepping out of this comfortable superintendent's office into a room filled with destruction and 10 frightened, bitter, angry people. I know what'll happen when such diverse people are brought together. All the tensions and pressures of our society will come to boil. Even the setting of the conference will add to the conflict. But conflict, if channeled correctly, can be a vital force that leads to change. And we need drastic changes now. Vandalism up 35%. Homicide up 73%. Burglaries up 86%. Robberies up 306%. Forcible rape up 61%. Assault on students up 167%. Assault on teachers up 7,100%. Now these figures are the increases between 1964 and 1968 for crimes in our schools. And between 1968 and today, the crime of violence has gotten even worse. Oh, that's an ugly picture. Ugly like this room. Well, it certainly isn't your normal conference hall, but it is effective. I can remember talking to a gang worker. I asked him why we administrators were so ineffective. How could we reach the people? He said it was all a matter of approach. And I hope this room will be the beginning. So again, we sit and talk. But this time with people from every area of youth crime, including youth. It's the only way to deal with violence in our schools. Well, if everybody's here, I've got to ask my question. Who's a businessman here? A factory owner? Anything. Well, then the right people aren't in the right room. And that's a shame. A shame for the kids. You think businessmen can solve the problem? They can do something. I work in the barrio, and I try to help children to find jobs. How do I have time to come to conferences? When 50 kids come to me each day, 
50 kids all begging for work. And maybe two or three to give out. What do you tell them? Do you send them back out on the streets for more trouble? Well, I'm sorry we don't have a businessman for you. And they say they don't have any money. Well, by the time they fix the trouble, it's going to cost them more money. You know, the people really don't want the good of the world. It's just not exciting enough. Well, I do think the problem's a little more complex than that. Well, what would you say it is? How much can you say that hasn't been said before? Okay. For well, one thing, the schools are, to a large extent, responsible for their own situation. The problem lies in the extreme of no discipline. Do you know what these kids should be today? Brighter than ever. Why isn't this happening? Because the schools have made themselves the enemy of the kids. Just take a look down this block. You see a whole row of untouched buildings, and this one right in the center. The only one vandalized. A school. It isn't fair to blame the schools. Are the schools your enemy, Key? Yeah, it's not your school. You don't have a say in what it does. And the school, man, I mean, like, doesn't just ignore you. Nah, it goes a lot further than that. I mean, it tells you you're going to fail. What about you, Carson? Man, there just isn't anything there for me. Even if I was to go to school, and try to do something. Hey, man, that's gonna take a lot of bread. That's the thing I ain't got. Just like any place else, the schools don't serve the folks. The knights and the ladies get all the benefits. So you join a gang. Join a gang for uh, acceptance. You join a gang in order to survive. Do they have to behave like animals, killing each other, devouring each other? Is that what the children really want? We don't have children anymore. What we do have is criminals, hooplers, rapists, and murderers. And that's why you can't blame the schools. I, I'm not picking on any one of you, but we teachers get so tired of hearing it's the school's fault, it's the teacher's fault all the time. The violence comes to us. It's there before we even open the door. You look. Look at how much time a child spends in school and how much time he's at home. Look at the two. It begins in the school. But where do the children spend their first years? Who gives them the way to see things? It's the family. All children pay more attention to their friends. Anybody but their parents. Ever have your child really listen to you? Shit! See it like I see it. The women teachers, hugging their purses in their laps, trying to teach like that, because they know their purses will get taken if they leave them up here on the desk. How can you teach like that? With one hand holding the lesson book and the other hand holding the door closed, trying to keep the violence out. Violence, hate. Doesn't anybody ever use the word love? Love? You can't use love to get through to kids you wouldn't dare give a pair of scissors to. That's because they've missed all the joys of growing up. You can't teach them. They should be removed from the schools for the good of the system. Now, where does that leave us? Do we just sit here and keep score? Yes, yeah, sit back. Say, don't bother me. Everybody take the easy way out. Well, it does seem that our society is either saying, do your own thing, or we set limits to the point of repression. No middle ground. Oh, that's just the point. Irresponsibility. Well, understand, do your own thing has been twisted. It's been translated into anything goes. Well, anything can't go. Or everything will go. Everything has gone. No one fears the law. It's time we start doing our job. Let everyone know, if they commit a crime, they're going to be punished. Agreed, agreed. But the danger is that we use punishment in the same way we've used permissiveness. Now, I'm a bit confused. Just what exactly are you saying? What's our job? That's what's important. It's rehabilitation. 
Now, punishment is a very important tool, but only one tool. I'd much rather send a man to jail for four or five days rather than 30, because in that time he can come to find out that jail isn't so bad. It's just like slavery. You put a man in chains. After a while, he gets used to it. He wants to live that way because he don't know no better way. But you don't keep that man blinded all his life. And when he sees what he doesn't have, he begins to think very deep about why he doesn't have it. Like the rich people. They want a gym, a swimming pool, or even a new school. And it seems like it just springs up over the night. Whereas people like me, we don't get nothing. That's just not true. I don't believe it. You're... What's your name? Carson. What did you say? Carson. Well, Carson, I've been to City Hall. I've yelled and I've screamed and I said, why isn't it safe for me to walk down my street? They don't have any answer for me. I don't know what you're complaining about, Carson. The department has set up sports programs. We give up our weekends for football, basketball. Time we could be spending at home with our wives and kids. Homes. Homes. Homes, yeah. Where, huh? In the suburb where it's safe? It's not safe in the suburbs, baby. It's one of the things, just one of the things happened in the rich communities that happen every day in the barrio. Huh, you bet they have meetings and solve it fast. Nothing gets solved fast. If we could just get some money, where would help? Aida, that's an easy argument. I'm not saying you're wrong. But it will always be a problem of too little money or not enough time. But are we doing everything we can with what we have? No, we're not even doing our job now. Well, here's a whole room full of experts what have we accomplished so far? Nothing. If only we would fight as hard to change society as the children fight each other. I think we are fighting hard. Vivian, your programs do offer some solutions. At my elementary school, we try to involve our neighborhood. The teachers and myself walk the community, knocking on the parents' doors, inviting them to participate in our many programs. Yeah, well, that's a fine and dandy thing. If you have a father who cares about that kind of stuff, but we've got to start somewhere. Right on. Before they get lost in this jungle. Now I work with the gangs in the streets. In the streets where the kids search to find their dignity. After a sick and aggressive society has turned them away. But there still must be a way to deal with the hardened criminal. We should say, look, you want to know how long you're going to be locked up? That's up to you and set some goals. You say, look, bud, before you get out of here, you gotta learn to read or whatever. Sure, sure, what? So you can lock me up studying the, the philosophy of the world or some other bull till I'm 50? Mm, no, no, no. Before I set any goals for you, I have to make sure they're right. You see, what I'm telling you is, I've got confidence in you. What? Well, look, look, I know, I make it easy. It's easy to say, but... Why is it so difficult? Because it is concern invested with love. And uh, that isn't always easy to give. That's very beautiful. But you said yourself, these criminals don't know love out there. No, man. Everyone loves. You go through life, and you go through death, man. Every day out there on the street, and your brothers and your sisters are right there beside you. They live, and they die for you, man, and you do the same. Because there's something that's always their officer. And nobody, not one of you, is ever going to feel it. Life and death? What do you mean, I'll never feel it? Something's very wrong when the gangs use 12-year-olds for hitmen. Because they know they're not going to be punished for murder. But what do you want, Skip? Revenge? I don't want them dropped back in my lap where they can terrorize me again. Yes, and I... I want him out of the schools. Some place where he can be helped. Because I cannot help him. And I can't stop him. Criminals pass through the probation department like a revolving door. That's an unjust statement. 
Well, there's some laziness or something going on down there. There's no way to be lazy when each probation officer has at least a hundred cases to handle. We're all overworked, Miss Ann. Right. All right, we're all overworked. Because that's not getting us anywhere. Look, the problem is much too big to blame us when everything else is failing. The courts, the schools. How much are people really trying to solve these problems? A teacher cannot be a, a probation officer, a judge, a policeman, a big brother, and a teacher as well. That's because the schools are going too easy on the troublemakers. I'm so pigs, man. You think I like being called a pig? Well, you think I like being called a nigger? Wait a minute, hold on. I hate you. You say you know where we coming from, but you ain't know the damn thing about it. No more than a little man with a mustache, or anybody else in here. I hate you, man, I hate you. You hate me, man. That's the worst part about it. You can keep on ripping off each other and keep on tearing up each other's neighborhoods and hating each other. Oh, man, you can buckle down and see what's really going on. You know, once you explode, you tear up everything, including yourself. And more than likely, you'll be the first to go. What are you talking about? You're a town, man. It seems like this room has produced some ugly situation. You brought me in here, and you blame me. You don't know me. You don't know what I'm thinking, man. You say, hey, this is your fault. Man, this is not my fault. This is your fault, man. The people in this, look at me. Look at me! The people in this room are a lot uglier than the room. No one listens. No one cares, and I want to get the hell out of here! That's your choice. Oh, before you go, please, remember why we came here. Violence. That's what brought us here. That's what we have to get rid of! The Latinos are fighting the Latinos. The blacks are, are fighting the blacks. The Asians fight the Asians. The whites fight the whites. And everybody is fighting each other. And here we are. With our own little fight. 